Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and today's an exciting day because I'm working on finishing up a birthday present for my mom, and it's really special for a variety of reasons. But primarily it's because I'm using acrylic and oil on the same piece. Stick around. So about a month and a half ago, uh, my parents lost their chocolate lab, Betsy, of uh, 11 years I think is how old she was. And uh, with my mom's birthday coming up, I was like, you know what, I want to do something special. So one thing that my mom has been bugging me to do uh, for years has been to paint a picture of the dog. And I think with uh, the dog's passing uh, being so close to her birthday, I was like, you know what, I think it's time for me to actually try and do this. Now it should be said that by the time this video comes out, uh, she will have gotten the present already and I've actually been dying to talk about this and post about this project that I haven't been able to because I want it to be a surprise. So why don't you come around to the other side of the table here and let me show you what I've got going on. Okay, so this is the painting. Uh, I'm really, really happy with this, how this is turning out. Um, specifically because I don't really do realism a whole hell of a lot and uh, I'm honestly shocked that I was able to pull this one off. Now I'm not uh, totally great at freehanding anything. Uh, so what I actually ended up doing with this is uh, doing a carbon back uh, from a photo. Now I took this photo uh, years ago, uh, would have made it. Uh, doesn't make it as big of a cheat because I mean, again, I took the photo, so it's it's still my work. It's just uh, a little bit uh, different. So uh, carbon back transfer uh, to get the line work done. Once I got the line work done, uh, the pr uh, primarily all of this piece was done. Uh, with some golden high flows and just two brushes, uh, and really small ones too. So if you want to know how to get this really intricate uh, brush work for the fur, don't use a big brush. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't think, actually the some of the grass uh, over on here I used a fan brush for, uh, just to kind of give it a little extra texture, but 99% of this uh, all is all just uh, a relatively uh, stiff uh, round brush that's pretty worn out and my regular liner brush to get just all of these little details. Now when you're doing anything uh, with like oil plus acrylic, uh, specifically <clears throat> a grayscale and then color on top, uh, what you want to do is absolutely make sure your detail and your um, tonal values are correct first before you come on top of that uh, with oils. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I wanted to give it the idea of a colorized black and white photograph. Also, um, my mom has always, I think, kind of wanted me to learn oils at some point, and I do know how to use them, I just don't use them a ton. Um, so again, uh, what I did for the past uh, roughly month or so, as much as I could, I worked on getting all those details right and matching that uh, to the photo the best that I possibly could. Now once that was finished, I put on a thin layer of the GAC 100 as an isolation coat, uh, because I wanted to make sure that I did not disturb any of that uh, great underlying brushwork uh, with the uh, oils on top of that. So I'm working on kind of setting up uh, to actually to paint with the oils. So let me show you uh, what I've got over here. So my setup is re relatively similar to what I do with uh, acrylics, but all my colors are a lot closer together. I'm going to be using them in a lot uh, smaller increments, uh, again with relatively small brushes. So I don't need to necessarily worry about uh, smearing them together because I'm, I'm not working with them in, in uh, the same way. I'm not mixing them in quite the same way. Uh, big empty space here. That's where a lot of my mixing is going to be done. Uh, because I've never liked the drying time of oils, uh, but I do need the flexibility to uh, work with them in that longer drying time. That's why I'm using the oils, but I also use uh, Gamelin's Galkid Light. Uh, you can see a dried sample of it here. It's very glossy, but what it does do is it allows those paints to dry within about uh, within like a day or two. Uh, really ends up being pretty good for that. I've already laid out a ton of my colors, uh, probably all the ones I'll be using. I've got some tubes on this side. I've got my sample tubes. I got a pigment stick that's uh, the manganese blue hue that's going to be used for the, uh, the tags on her uh, around her collar. Um, but other than that, that's really kind of just where my setup is for this. And then I'm going to grab some brushes. Okay, so I make it a point not to mix uh, my brushes that I use for acrylic uh, and mix them into using with oils. I like to keep the brushes separate for those each mediums. Uh, watercolors too, I keep, I keep those separate, but you don't necessarily have to. Uh, so, back when my friend uh, Jim Gettner died, I got uh, all, uh, pretty much all of his old uh, materials, including his brushes, and a lot of his brushes uh, were for oils, so that's exclusively what I use his brushes for now, are oils, and then occasionally some special effects with acrylics, but not too, too often. So in this case, I'm looking for uh, mostly just a couple of stiff brushes, 
um, and a couple of small ones. So, really, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be pulling out of here. That one's all right. A slightly larger one, maybe. For some bigger areas. Crazy fan brush. That'll be good for detailing. Just a couple of different here for you know the mixing of the colors. That's good. There we go. Nice uh, collection of relatively small brushes and then a crazy fan for doing uh, those uh, the grass work. Okay, so I'm not going to give you guys the, the overhead angle today because this is actually a project I do need to concentrate on and be relatively um, con conscious of what I'm doing. Um, so at this point, I really just want to, again, give it a little bit of uh, glazed color. Uh, also, uh, in advance, I forgot to mention that I'm using uh, odor odorless mineral spirits, uh, obviously rather than water. Uh, just that way I'm not getting uh, any... Uh, bubbling effects or anything like that because we're working with oils, not acrylics, so we have to be careful uh, and make sure we're cleaning our brushes properly. So let me grab a little of this galka down here. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, um, you're just going to start working this. Uh, you're probably going to see the camera cut a little bit because uh, I, again, concentrating, can't really narrate this entire process, especially when I'm working with something that uh, I don't normally do. But I do want to start uh, really on the back and work forward, same way uh, you would in any other piece. So, got to mix uh, up some greens. I want to work on these darks in the back here, uh, and everything like that. And also, unlike uh, my regular work, I'm actually not painting the edges for this project. I am uh, just going to be doing the uh, the front. I, the sides I just made, uh, painted black to to uh, offset things. A bit like that. Don't need a lot of paint for, for doing this. It's all that base tone's already established. And I make sure I have my photo references off to the side as well. Actually, I think I'm probably going to just throw this process into time lapse. Maybe narrate on top of it. Uh, that way I can actually save my concentration and uh, toss my music back on. So any tips along the way, I'll be sure to give to you uh, through narration and such.
Okay, so the majority of the color is now done, but what I actually do now have to do is let this uh, dry at least a little bit. Uh, biggest uh, reason here is I have been trying to remind myself not to rest my hand on the on the painting, which is something I do when I work with acrylics, but I can't do it with oil because it smears, and it's actually all over my hand, too. Uh, so I do need to give this some time to dry, probably about a day, uh, just to be sure that uh, most of the uh, bigger sweeping areas of that thinner color is are, is indeed dry. After that point, I have to go in and kind of redetail some stuff. I uh, saw me working with a smaller brush, getting the uh, the collar and the tags done. Um, also, I'm going to actually come back in with acrylic as well and get uh, a little bit of uh, iridescent silver on the. Uh, uh, the, the little rings for the for, for the hanging off the collar and stuff here because I do want that to, to shimmer a little bit uh, But outside of that it looks pretty good um, <clears throat> Genuinely very happy with this uh, It's a little bit browner than my reference photo But uh, that's kind of on purpose and I do want to again with I do the final detail I'm going to push those lights and those darks a little bit more because this was mostly just plastering on the brown one thing you're actually probably not going to see me do with this is sign the front of this because I don't want to uh, obstruct from the uh, overall composition. I mean, I could probably hide it maybe in the twig or something here, or try, really try to tuck it into this corner, but I'm probably just going to sign the back of this one uh, rather than the front of it. But uh, I'm really happy with this. Again, I think my mom's going to be really pleased, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks since I actually uh, one finished this as well as recorded that first part of the video, which, uh, needless to say, is now a very late birthday present for my mom. But um, I wanted to be sure it both looked right as well as uh, was dry. Uh, so I'm to the point now where I'm going to throw this just uh, relatively cheapy varnish on it. Uh, not that I am bragging that it's cheapy varnish, it's just that uh, versus something like, a, like an MSA varnish, this stuff's going to dry a little quicker and uh, be a little easier on the cleanup. So I'm going to just grab some of that. Actually, I probably could have... Whoa, hello. Also, you notice uh, I'm actually working on my washing machine. I'm just going to put this right on the right on the painting because that's not going to work with the palette. Because uh, I got something else on my table, so I'm just going to yeah, just drop some of that down. So right on there for a varnish, you want a nice soft brush and wide bristles. I'm actually using this old house painter brush, uh, but the bristles are still nice and soft since I haven't used it a ton. And I'm just going to be covering this in a relatively thin layer. This is a uh, oil matte varnish. And uh, specifically wanted to go for a matte versus a gloss for this. Because this is going to hang in my parents' house. And I don't want that super glossy finish. Because I know uh, my parents don't really like the super glossy finish. Uh, it's also going to unify my surface sheen uh, from all of the uh, paint itself. Just a little bit more of this on here. Uh, Unify surface sheen because uh, I had a lot of different types of colors on here that gave me a lot of different uh, different sheens, different uh, glossinesses to them. Just want to even that out. Spread some on my edges, which I just painted black. And the reason why I had to wait so long is one, you know, using oils, oils take a while to dry, and they take a while to dry sort of completely. Uh, technically, in theory, this sh I should have waited three months before varnishing, strictly because the uh, oxidation of oils can take up to three months, which is a pain in the butt. However, I just uh, figured can't hurt to uh, do this uh, when the oil is at least uh, uh, regular dry, which takes about a week uh, from the final coat, depending on your painting environment, humidity, and all that jazz. That looks pretty good. Luckily, oops, excuse me, this varnish doesn't actually take a super long time to dry, uh, maybe about an hour. Uh, so once this does indeed dry, we should be good to go. And that is a finished painting. So it's still a little tacky and a little glossy since it's still just to dry. But as always, we want to talk about this as the finished project and let you know what I'm doing to finish it up. 
So, going to be wiring the back so it is able to hang, as well as sliding the back. As I mentioned before, I don't want to disturb this composition in any way, so rather than sliding a corner one way or another and kind of screwing up uh, how things look, I'm just going to sign the back instead. And uh, then you know, deliver it to my mom as a, as a present. A uh, very late present. I did send a, a, an email being like, hey, this is what I'm working on on my birthday, so I had not done, but in my track record, I've uh, given her uh, sort of a surprise project like this before, and it was not done on time then either, so uh, I, I can't say it uh, is the first time that's ever happened. I do hope you enjoyed this little highlight into this process a little bit though, uh, specifically because I was using uh, oils. Again, I, I'm mostly an acrylic painter, but I wanted to show that one, I can do oils if I put my mind to it, and two, uh, uh, oil and acrylic, uh, you can totally work with them together uh, if you just layer them properly. So that's about it for this video. As always, if you learned something or enjoyed the project, go ahead and hit that like button. Get subscribed if you're not already. Follow me on social links in the description box below. And this has been Fasada Block Studios, reminding you to keep on creating, and I'll see you guys next time.